if f is a one-to-one -one function, then there exists a function g such that f composed with g of x equals x and g composed with f of x equals x. Now, what these two composition statements mean is that if you take one function and plug it into another one, and you do those operations, you're going to get x. If you do it the other way around, in terms of how you plug one function into another, you're also going to get x. And what that means is that you're, you're doing this. You are taking x, and you're going to plug it into g. Now, we know that when we take a value and plug it into a function, it has the potential to be something different. Most of the time, it is a different value. So if you plug in 5, you typically get something back that's not 5. Well, what you would do with that result is that you would then plug it into f, and what f does is it reverse engineers everything to get back the original input. So if you plug 5 into g and you get a number, you plug that number into f, f's going to give you back 5. So g messes with 5, and f puts things back the way they were. So these guys are constantly undoing each other. It's, you know, it's like children right? You will pick up after your children. You put everything away nicely and neatly. You, you fold their laundry, right? And you, you pick up their Legos. And what do they do? Children are inverse functions. They undo all of your hard work. You folded laundry, they unfold it. You clean dishes, they dirty them. You pick up the Legos, they dump them out, right? Children are lovely, lovely inverse functions. And they're just like you. So, if you can find this inverse function, we're going to have this relationship. And so, g is called the inverse of f, and a lot of times the notation that we use, instead of saying g, we'll use this. We'll use f inverse, like that, with a little negative one. It almost looks like it's a, like it's a power, but it's not. And so we would say something like this, f inverse of x. That's how you'd write the inverse. All right, so we're going to do an example here of a function and something that we're proposing is the inverse, okay? So I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to say that f of x is equal to 2x plus 4. And g of x is equal to 1 half x minus 2. And what I want us to do is I want us to verify that these guys are inverses. So you're going to see problems like this show up in the homework. It'll say, here are two functions. Determine whether they are inverses of each other or not. And what you're doing is that you're going to do these operations. You're going to do the function composition to make sure that you get x out. Just x, nothing else. And if you do the composition the two different ways that are presented here, and the results are both x, then they are inverses of each other. So let's examine this. If I take f of g of x, if I'm doing this composition, all right? So that means, let's get our color coding out here. I'm going to let the blue be my f and the pink represent my g. So this means f of g of x. Now this is not new. This is the function composition that we did a long time ago. And so what I'm trying to see is what happens if I plug in this variable expression. If I plug in 1 half x minus 2 into my function. Okay, let's see what happens. So here's f right here. So I'm going to take this. So this is 2 parentheses plus 4. And in the parentheses I'm plugging in 1 half x minus 2. So let's see what happens. When I distribute the 2, I get x. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Then plus 4, and this equals x. So doing function composition this way, where I'm taking x going through g and then going through f, um, well, you get back x. So x gets changed by going into g but then f will undo everything and see how this works out. You have multiplication times one half and the inverse of multiplying times one half is multiplying times two. Now, the way this is set up is kind of hard to see, but there is a minus four that's going on here and the inverse of minus four is plus four. So these operations end up canceling each other out. 
But let's flip it around and let's see if we still get the same thing. See if we still get x if I change the order here. So if I do g composed with f of x, that means g of, and here we're plugging in the blue f of x. So into g, I'm going to plug in, let's see, f of x is 2x plus 4, like that. And let's see what we get. So g of 2x plus 4, let me back it up real quick. So here's g of x. I'm going to do 1 half times x minus 2. So that's going to be 1 half times this input value minus 2. All right, so let's plug in the 2x plus 4. And now let's distribute. So half of 2x is just 1x. Half of 4 is 2 and then minus 2, and when you simplify this, you again get x. Huh. So it doesn't matter which way we do the function composition here, these functions will undo what the other guy does. So we have shown that f and g are inverses. Cool. Now in the next video, we're going to see what happens when we look at their graphs. How do graphs of inverses relate to each other?